Hi everybody. I've had several requests about um, giving instructions on how to build an incubator so I thought I would do a video on how I built my incubator. Uh, I hobby breed leopard tortoises, redfoot tortoises, and cherry heads uh, and I needed something larger than the little hoover baiters that I was using. This is a uh, typical cooler box, drink box, like you see in any store. You can also use upright freezers and old refrigerators to make incubators. The first thing you want to do is remove all the mechanical parts out of it. Uh, you won't need the fan and motor and uh, compressor, condenser, any of that stuff that's uh, inside one of these cooler box or refrigerators. So gut all of that out first and then you're ready to start modifying it so that you can make your incubator. When you're ready to assemble your incubator, you don't need many tools. Uh, a drill, a drill bit, a two inch diameter hole saw that will cut through metal, and aluminum tape, which is what you're going to tape your flex watt down to the walls of your incubator with. Uh, that's about it. Uh, you do need some bolts and screws, but as far as tools, this is all you need to buy. When I was researching to build my own incubator, there was one question that I never got an answer to, and that was what wattage do I need to install in the incubator to properly heat it? Uh, this is what I came up with, and I think it, since it works for me, it would probably work for you. First of all, you need to know the cubic foot of the interior of your incubator box. You find this by measuring the length, the width, and the height of the interior and you multiply these three dimensions. You take the total from that and you divide it by 1728. This gives you your total cubic feet. Uh, what I've come up with as far as wattage per cubic foot is 15 to 25 watts per cubic foot. To show you how this um, calculation related to my incubator, uh, my incubator is seven and a half cubic feet on the inside. I installed 120 watts of flex watt heat tape. This gave me 16 watts per cubic foot. Uh, this is working very well for me. I would have preferred 20 watts per cubic foot, but uh, size restraints inside the box, I wasn't able to install that much flex watt tape. Uh, what I do have in there is 4 feet of 11 inch wide 20 watt tape and 4 feet of 3 inch wide 10 watt tape. The second question I had when I was researching on building my incubator uh, was what size air holes did I need to put in the sides of the incubator so I could have a good air exchange. Uh, as tortoise eggs develop, they emit CO2 and you need to have a good air exchange so that the CO2 does not build up inside your incubator. So uh, what I did to correct this is I drilled two two inch holes in the top of the incubator and I did this by first drilling a pilot hole all the way through the top of the incubator and then I took a hole saw and I drilled two two inch holes with the hole saw. You have to drill from the top and then inside the incubator drill up through the bottom and the holes go all the way through. The circulating fan is directly beneath these two vent holes. Now I didn't know if the holes were too large or the right size or what. Uh, so I went to the hardware store and I bought these two plumbing adapters, PVC plumbing adapters. They're two inch diameter and they have a three quarter inch inside diameter hole. So I can insert these two adapters into my vent holes and this reduces the size of the hole. 
since I've experimented with it for the last uh, year and a half, I have found that the two two inch diameter holes work great. Uh, I keep a good humidity level and a perfect temperature level and I know that there's a lot of fresh air being drawn into the incubator itself. Okay, I've taken all of the eggs out of the incubator so that I can show you the incubator completely empty and that way I can show you how I installed the flex watt and the shelving hardware. Now what you see here is the flex watt tape is running down the back of the incubator and along the floor of the incubator. I have it taped in position using the um, aluminum tape and I just taped down the perimeter all the way around. Uh, I didn't want any water to wick up under the tape uh, just in case I spilled anything in the incubator. But that's the flex watt installed. Now when I purchased my flex watt heat tape, uh, I requested that they go ahead and solder the wiring onto it. So mine came pre-wired. Uh, this is the wiring here coming off of the tape and I've brought it over to the side of the incubator right here, drilled a hole, and just pushed the wire through to the outside. Uh, you plug this directly into your Helix uh, proportional thermostat, so that's a very easy installation. It was no trouble at all. So far it's held up very well for the last year and a half. There's another view of it. So that's how you install the flex watt. Just tape it down with aluminum tape all around the perimeter. This drink box came with a fan that was already in the top of the box. Uh, I tried using that, but the motor of the fan ran so hot it actually overheated the inside of the uh, incubator. So what I did was I removed the fan that was original to the drink box and I installed this fan see if I can get a close shot this is a computer cooling fan it measures 4.25 inches and I think you can read these the, the uh, specifications of the fan uh, it's all metal I think it costs like $25 it's been running continuously for 18 months and has done an excellent job. Uh, you can direct wire this kind of fan. <clears throat> All I did was attached wires and a plug and I plugged the fan directly into the wall outlet. So this is my circulating fan inside the incubator. It runs continuously. The drink box that I was able to find to uh, make my incubator did not have any shelves inside of it. Um, I thought that what I wanted to do was slide out shelves, so uh, this is how I did my slide out incubator shelves. First of all, I went to a site called speedymetal.com and I ordered pre-cut aluminum U-channel. I sent them the uh, lengths that I wanted and the quantity, and it was a very fast return on my order, so I, you know, I, was, I was happy with the delivery time, and they did a good job. Now, if I step back, you can see all of the runners I have in there for my sliding shelves. This is one inch U-channel. It's made of aluminum. Uh, what I did was drill two holes in each piece of aluminum U-channel on each end and then I drilled matching holes into the wall of the uh, incubator and I ran bolts through the U-channel all the way through the side of the incubator and I screwed on these acorn nuts to hold it in place 
Now if I back up, you're going to see all the little acorn nuts holding my shelving in place. When I installed the shelves, I did 6 inch space between each shelf. This allows me to slide in the egg cartons uh, and also utilize the space real well. I was able to get 5 shelves. To make each shelf of my incubator, I simply bought a, a long piece of wire closet shelving and I took a pair of bolt cutters and I cut the shelf to the width that I needed to fit in the incubator. Uh, you can slide it right into the U-channel. You see there. Slide in and out. Uh, it works pretty good. Uh, you can pull the shelf out and it won't fall, you know, it won't completely fall out of the incubator. I thought I would use the sliding shelves a lot more than I have. Uh, the next incubator I build, I'm just going to do stationary shelves because it would be a lot easier uh, to mount stationary shelves inside the incubator than the sliding shelves. The thermostat that I'm using for this incubator is a Helix DBS 1000. Uh, I really like this thermostat. It's a proportional thermostat, so it's not just cutting the heating element on and off. Uh, it raises and lowers the amount of electricity that's sent to the flex tape, which gives you a gradual warming and cooling, which is a lot more natural. So this is the Helix. Uh, you can program it to whatever you want. I uh, incubate at 86 degrees, and the incubator is holding 86 degrees to 86.4 degrees top to bottom. So everything's working great. Now the Helix comes with a probe. Here's the probe wire. You're going to have to drill a hole through the side of your incubator box and position the probe inside the incubator. Now here's the wire. What I do is uh, basically just lay the wire on the shelf so that it's centered uh, left to right on the shelf and it's about two inches from the heat tape. Uh, this is giving me a lot of control on the temperature and uh, it seems to work real well. So it just lays on the shelf about two inches away from the heat tape. This shot shows my water containers inside the incubator. I have a large shallow container on the top shelf and the circulating fan blows right down into it. The rippling effect of the water creates a lot of uh, humidity inside the incubator and so that works real well. And at the bottom I have um, a couple of little shelves, I don't even know where I got them, but there's four small containers of water on those on that very bottom shelf above the heat tape that runs along the floor. So it warms the water and it evaporates the water causing a good humidity level. You want the humidity in your incubator to be around 85%. This is a shot that just shows you all the shelves in place, but the eggs aren't back in the incubator yet. So once you have your incubator uh, built and you're test running it, and you do want to test run it for several days before you add the eggs, uh, I recommend that you put a couple of thermometers inside of the incubator, one on the top rack and one towards the bottom, uh, so that you can keep tabs on the temperature and humidity to make sure it's consistent all over the incubator. Uh, my favorite thermometer is the Oregon Scientific brand. I've had many of these for over 10 years and they still work perfectly. So you get what you pay for. Go ahead and get a good quality thermometer. Uh, this particular model has a thermometer and a hygrometer built into it. So they're very useful to put into an incubator. Uh, if you have a thermometer, you can buy a separate hygrometer, and this is one right here. 
Uh, it has a probe on it. You can mount this on the outside of your incubator or just put the whole thing inside. Set the probe about the middle in the middle of the incubator so that you can get a, uh, a reading on the um, humidity level in there. Okay, I've got all the eggs back in the incubator and the fan's running again, so I'm ready to shut the door and wait four and a half months to see if I have any hatchlings. Well, if you've built a good incubator and it's working properly, this is what you get in the end, and it really is worth it.